Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 53 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Limpicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about the problem is that cloud is a victim of its own success as in the pervasiveness of cloud environments across today's enterprises with a majority of IT applications that are either built or run or using hybrid cloud architectures. This has called for vastly different skill sets, technologies and processes. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show this week. Yeah, it's great to be here, and I'm glad we're talking about this survey again. We talked about it last week, and I think Joe McKendrick had some great uh, thoughts on it. It's a friend of mine, so I figured we'd talk about it this week on the training show. Yeah, splendid, and it really is a great topic because, you know, it, it covers so many great aspects that um, I know you've got some great thoughts on. So, yeah, look, really looking forward to this show, actually. Uh, so, look, an opening question for this one, then, Dave, is will the enterprise that can hire the fastest win the game? Yeah, it's funny. I guess if you pay a million dollars a year for a, uh, a cloud engineer, I think you can hire probably as fast as you need to hire at that rate. But ultimately, you're not going to win the game because you're paying too much money uh, for these people. So where is the happy medium where they are willing to hire the right skill sets you know, at the right price that's fair to the people who are hiring and also is actually going to be additive to their career? Uh, make sure we're managing them correctly. And, and and the on-ramp study, which we talked about last week, and and Joe McKendrick wrote it up this week and had some, I thought, some um, some better thoughts on it. Joe's a good friend of mine. He's been writing for ZDNet forever on service-oriented architecture topics and now the cloud. And the cloud is a victim of its own success. I mean, the biggest um, uh, hindrance to productivity that I hear from my clients is they can't find the talent and the people they need to make things happen. And even, you know, doing the admin stuff and simple cloud development stuff, they just can't, you know, get it out there in the market as, as it is today. And, of course, people are running to training. They're trying to train people as much as possible. But that's going to be a build versus buy kind of thing that's going to take a lot longer. It's going to take, and also you're going to have the people who don't necessarily gravitate to the cloud skills and don't, uh, you know, want to do that as a career path, you know, versus the people who are, you know, all in and have the skills and, you know, skills to pay the bills that we said and really kind of get, you know, and take things to the next level. So, I mean, the survey came up with some pretty, pretty, uh, you know, um, enlightening stuff. I mean, the DevOps and site reliability engineer, you know, 30, you know, 33 percent and skills that are demanded at this time. Multi-cloud monitoring, 24%. Cloud native development and maintenance, microservices architecture, 22%. Digital business support, 11%. AI and machine learning, also 11%. So ultimately, you know, these are the hottest skills in the business uh, and the ability to kind of fill in the right, you know, get the right people you know, to the right jobs are gonna be the you know, largest challenge going forward. I mean, DevOps and site reliability engineering I guarantee 99% of the enterprises out there in the HR enterprises don't even know what the hell that is. And so you have to really kind of define what that is down to the details so people know what they need to look for. And people who get the job, you know, know that the job descriptions are going to be related to what they're looking for, uh, you know, what they're looking to do, when, you know, at, at the job. And, you know, this kind of massive, uh, you know, um, that was the word I'm looking for. I would say, I wouldn't say ignorance, but not necessarily understanding, you know, what the roles and responsibilities are and what the next generation, what the jobs even entail. And therefore, they can't find the people because they can't explain the jobs correctly. Um, you know, it's a it's a catch 22 in the business right now. And I think businesses are really suffering. They're not able to hire the people because they don't have the skills in the house to really kind of vet the people and to write the correct job descriptions under how things are mapping to their their current technological uh, needs and responsibilities, and the people aren't out there to hire in the first place. So, what's a you know global two thousand enterprise to do who wants to move to the cloud? Yeah, you're right. I mean, you've just summed it up so well. Uh, in fact, almost words uh, from my own mouth, really. I mean, we've done we've done a couple of shows on on the methodology behind recruiting hard to find talent or talent that's um, you know almost uh, non-existent because the the roles have evolved into a merger of certain things from a um, uh, almost a non-existent marketplace into something that's very needed right now. Uh, and I think that it's gone from nothing to 100% of needed 
um, which is which is crazy. I mean, I don't think IT has really ever seen that before. Um, to the certainly to the extent of the way cloud has grown and to the the projected figures of what cloud's supposed to be at in, even in the next year or two, which is we talk about you know India scaling their training to work out that huge deficit of uh, of, of need uh, you know globally. Um, but yeah, look, you're right in so many ways because you have got so many people from a uh, an HR point of view, I'm not going to name companies or anything like that because we don't do that on this show. Um, but you know, there's an archaic element to HR and recruitment with, internally within organisations that are still using standardised systems for, you know, recruiting a secretary or an administrator in an office that they are for trying to define a really specific, hard to find role to fill in a cloud environment. Uh, and I, and I think it's almost a, you know it's certainly costing organisations. Uh, thousands if not millions for bad hires and, and the process of you know hiring someone that's not suitable for the job because the job role just wasn't actually the thing that was the the right thing to give that particular indif- individual because it wasn't written out correctly when well, you've got a job description written by an hr department and it's not led by the the team lead or the project manager or something like that you're not you're never going to get the the you might have the um, certification fit but you won't have the cultural fit you won't have what is exactly needed to make that that role fulfilled, and and I'm sure you've found that on on a number of occasions, haven't you, Dave? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and my my advice to them is, uh, you know, really get you know something like a chief uh, cloud you know talent officer, or a chief IT talent officer. If you want something more generic, you know, so they can kind of you know look at this stuff as strategic roles within the organization, be able to write the recs, understand how this maps to the market. And the, also understand where to go off and find the talent. Um, I think the the biggest risk right now is mismatch of people who are getting these positions who aren't necessarily going to allow the companies to be successful. And it's not the fault of the people who are accepting the jobs. They're doing what they can that they think is right in the career. It's the fault of people who are writing the racks, going to the wrong places, you know, looking at different metrics, certification versus around, you know, all around, uh, you know, IT skills along with um, and the along with uh, cloud computing being part of it, and the ability to kind of take things to the, to the level that they're looking to get into, and and also finding people who are innovative and creative and able to work in the culture of the company, you know, all these sorts of things are certainly these multi variables that uh, are going to kill people because right now they're throwing money at the problem, um, whether they're dealing with recruiters or whether they're dealing with people. You know, getting people on board as quickly as they can and doing these large signing bonuses and things like that. I think that's not necessarily something that's going to be successful long term. It needs to be strategically focused, need to have somebody who understands what's going on, what's the difference between a DevOps and site reliability engineer versus a multi-cloud monitoring and management. I guarantee the people who are writing the racks don't even know what those things are and what they do and the different tool sets in there. And once they get that, they get kind of the intelligence inside the company. So people are running, moving them in the right direction. They're going to start being able to targeting the hires they need to make them successful. My fear is now they're hiring as quickly as they can, throwing money at the problem. They're going to end up mishiring 50, 70, you know, 50 to 70 percent of the time. And those people they're hiring right now will not be within the company in four years. 100 percent. Absolutely right, Dave. And it's something that's a real bugbear for me because... You know, you, you personally don't really want to work with a company that's got this archaic approach of just giving you a list, a shopping list of the individual they wish to get, uh, with an X amount of experience, with an idea of what certifications they require, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it, it just doesn't work like that. It certainly doesn't work like that in today's cloud market. And like you've just said, you're experiencing this firsthand. Uh, it, it's out there. You know, there's millions and millions of dollars being wasted on hiring the bad people, or well, not the bad people, but the bad hiring process. They're hiring the wrong people based on, you know, a, um, a, um, a form of recruitment which is out of date when it comes to a cloud environment. You know, it needs to be scenario based. It needs to be output based. It needs to be a way where y- you can demonstrate to a potential hire what the outputs are that they need to be capable of doing. Um, and, and it's just not adopted. We, I've spoken so many times to you about this. People are just, they almost just don't want to do that. I mean, it's just not part, it, it makes people feel uncomfortable of, it, it becomes more work time intensive from an HR point of view to actually build up a strategy around, you know, going to find the right people. Because those people are out there um, and, and they're certainly not on job boards, <laughs> which uh, I often laugh about. And recruiters say, well, I've been on the job board. And it's like, why would you go on there? 
you know, everyone on those job boards is just using all the hot words that are associated with cloud. It doesn't mean they've got any business with cloud. Um, they just want to get, you know, throw in, if you throw enough mud against the wall, some of it's going to stick. You know, and it's just one of those things. So, uh, you know, I think if, uh, like you said, if it's scaled back and we look at the outputs of the role and a scenario-based hiring process for, you know, getting a good hire, you're going to have that uh, loyalty within that individual and the longevity of employment from that hire as well. Uh, you know, we, we spoke on a show, actually, which was all about recruitment some time ago, but, you know, it, it's one of those bugbears. A shopping list for finding the right hire in this marketplace of cloud, it's just not the right way forward, in my opinion. What are your thoughts? No, I agree. I agree. You got to make it a priority and you have to make changes in how you're going to improve it with inside the company. And I think we're trying to, in essence, solve uh, more complex problems with the same processes we've had in the last 20, 30 years. I think now's the time to start blowing up, uh, you know, recruiting and, and, and IT, uh, IT HR and rethinking in how we do it. I think that most organizations are realizing they're going to get themselves in trouble because they don't have the people around to solve their issues. And that's really kind of the fault of what we're, we're getting at here. They don't, they haven't got the people in the company to take them to the next level. They mishired to the point of, you know, 70%. And that's, that's going to be totally unacceptable to the point of, um, taking down the business. Yeah, absolutely right. There's no way you can form any alignment on a budget point of view if you're constantly hiring bad people based on uh, an archaic form of rec a recruitment process just because that's what you've used, like you said, for the last 20 years. It makes no sense whatsoever. So I'm, I'm glad we've brought this up again. It's, uh, it's a real bugbear for me, as you can tell. I'm quite passionate about this. I find it incredibly frustrating, to be perfectly frank. And I don't really want to work with people that haven't got a different approach to recruitment or you know sourcing. Uh, for their, their, their projects or something, because I think it's really fundamentally flawed uh, if they can't identify what the outputs are for the role and, and we can't have a conversation around that uh, and they haven't got the time to do that because they're so busy. What they're saying is they're so busy, they're happy to, to make sure that company loses millions in hiring the bad people. Yeah. Well, that's what it's going to take. It's going to take people making a mistake and feeling the pain. Unfortunately, that's the way... Uh, a lot of change occurs in this industry, and I think it's it's no different here. So the smart companies will will uh, see it as an issue they need to proactively solve. And there's a few of them out there, and I run into them all the time. But it's the majority of companies are going to, you know, step into it, and then ultimately have to back up a bit and rethink how they do their hiring. And I, I think that's just a way it's going to go because the market's going to move in that direction. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, look, Dave, you're know, absolutely right, and it moves us on nicely to your top three tips for this week, actually. So, if you'd be good enough to share, that'd be pretty awesome. Thank you. Yeah, number one is, and we said this before, you know, trying, and this is kind of a new take on it. Try not to follow the hype too much, and I think the reality is, is that there's too many people who are slicing and dicing, you know, who they see are the major skill sets and talents. And really kind of getting into a particular silo of technology. And so if someone's a microservice architect, they want that person. But if they're a service-oriented architect, they don't want them. And the reality is they probably want in the same. And they're the same sort of a brain pattern, but they're missing the boat on a service-oriented architect who may also understand how to do microservices versus a microservice architecture who may not how to know how to do service-oriented architecture. So think larger, larger and strategic. Someone who does a time series database and blockchain should have generic database skills and relational database skills and you know kind of be able to have a larger kind of a footprint into IT and how it's going to work. And if they don't have these things, I think it's going to be detrimental to your ability to use them beyond some of your tactical you know, use cases going forward. I would never take a job if they were looking to hire me for one particular skill set. You know, it'd have to be an eclectic array of things. I would have to be a human being that's going to be able to fit into their mix and help take the company to the next level. And that's, there should be a progression of a career and something valuable and thinking innovative and creative in the space, things like that. We have very much into the tactical skills matches tactical talent and, and that we can't do that anymore. You know, keep the fundamentals in mind, and that's what we just stated. The ability to understand how to do databases, uh, you know, versus having to, you know, leverage DynamoDB skills. And so if someone was interviewing with me on looking to do AWS DynamoDB, that's all well and good. I could certainly, you know, get to a certain level of detail on what that database is about and how they leverage it. But the reality is I want to also know how to do database theory, database design, uh, metadata management, data and data integration. Those sorts of skills should be 
you know, part of the mix as well. And if they don't have it, I'd be rather concerned. I really couldn't put them in with a client or put them in with, uh, with a, um, you know, into a job at a company uh, that I was CTO at or whatever, and, and kind of have them add value to what everybody's doing to the ultimate extent. And keep in mind, these are long-term hires. And the, the biggest problem I have is people love to hire people within the short term with short-term objective. And I think that's lazy human resources. If you're doing capital management, there should be a strategic objective for these people. They back into a series of talents and there should be certain patterns that they that they get into that are more multidimensional. The ability to deal with the culture, the ability to deal with the technology, the general generalized technology as well as specific technology, the ability to live in kind of a world where they're an autodidact and so they can learn things on their own. They don't have to be, uh, you know, shepherded to training uh, just to, uh, you know, get into new systems or waiting for someone to pick them up and, and uh, push them into a class. Uh, those people frustrate the, you know, frustrate me to death because ultimately, you know, I'm not responsibility. For, I'm not responsible for their ability to kind of change their skill sets and change their knowledge sets. That's their responsibility. So they need to understand, look at the trends, where the trends are going, and then learn as much as they can in those areas to figure out how they can be a help to the companies that are hiring them. Great top tips there, Dave. Well, Dave, look, thanks for being part of the uh, training show this week. Really appreciate that. It's always a pleasure, man. Take care. And to you. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this week's training show. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at Dave Olympicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, obviously, and LinkedIn. So come and find us on LinkedIn. All the um, uh, posts and everything like that. Sorry, posts, what am I talking about? All of the links are down below in the description box. You can check out um, all our social media. Also, David's links for the blogs as well. So come and check those out. Uh, remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. And click subscribe so you are notified of what's going on with our channel and all our latest shows. We've got some great shows coming up for the new year. So really looking forward to uh, our special guest for 2019. Uh, this is one of our closing shows for 2018. So it's been quite a, quite a journey this year. So it's been uh, pretty exciting. But thanks for watching and until next week.